That's kind of dramatic. Just a just main. I, I thought I was hearing. Is things. that our new news open? <laughs> I guess. So. Maine. Maine, okay. I like that. Yeah, all right. Well, today on Good Morning Maine, a Brewer man passed away while using his cell phone while driving a motorcycle. Plus, hunters gather for a vigil to mourn those killed last week in Lewiston. And Maine hunters will be happy to get back into the woods on opening day of this season. Good morning and welcome to Maine. <laughs> Good morning, Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. It was just we let you know where we are today. I know that was Maine. strange. I thought it was my IFB, my, my earpiece. Yeah, but I think it was the wrong button pushed there yeah, or something. Yeah. Anyway, good morning, everyone. It's Monday. Yep. We made it through another week. What am I say? We made it through the weekend. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I know. It, um, I hope that folks had a palate cleanser. Everything's been yeah. very heavy in the air. Um, I hope people were able to find access to community members or just be with other people and I think enjoy. Everybody was just exhausted by the weekend, just yeah. emotionally and everything else. Yeah. So it was a tough, tough week last week, tough weekend. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we're pushing ahead now. So right. we, we made it to Monday. And yep. as far as the weather is concerned, it's kind of eh. Yep. Depending on how you look at it, a uh, little rain in the forecast for today. They're saying maybe even a little icy mix. Uh, some folks down on the coast, I saw they're already hearing what sounds like freezing rain on their on their Crazy. windows this morning. I was in so. Bar Harbor on Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was 75 degrees. Was there great. were people in yeah. the pools. Yeah. 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 I had shorts and a t-shirt on Saturday yeah. running around doing yeah. my thing. And then yesterday, what a rude awakening. Right. So. But it seems more appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Fall like weather today, that's for sure. Definitely. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. As we get into things this morning, active weather taking place with a winter weather advisory posted along the north here and for the counties highlighted here in purple until around 4 p.m. Some accumulating snow taking place there. Some spots could possibly see up to around five to six inches, according to where my hand is at right now. Further down to the south, mainly rainfall expected and a small crowd advisory posted until 11 a.m. Tuesday along the coast because of some winds that will be expected. On top of that, though, the visibility levels aren't bad just yet, but the key word there is yet. Look what's off toward the north and west, so that reduced visibility there, courtesy of the snowfall that are seeing further off towards the north. And that will be heading towards the northern parts of the state coming up soon. Bangor mainly to the south should mainly stay as rain. You might see a little bit of snow mixing in from time to time as well. I'm not too worried about accumulation for you. A lot of will be further off towards the north where the accumulating snow will be possible in a few spots and it's all starting to fill in with a lot of moisture that will be moving through with rain and snow that will be on the way today maybe some sleep mixing in from time to time as well so i have to keep an eye on that as it does develop over time future cast for today will catch a little bit of a break by around five o'clock later this afternoon in the evening time frame and look at this by around tuesday morning a lot of this really starts to get out of here as for your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period rain and snow on the way temperatures in the 30s and 40s your full five day forecast is Coming up, Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. Authorities continue to investigate a motorcycle accident that claimed the life of a Brewer man. According to Bangor Police Department, 24-year-old Drew Baker of Brewer was traveling out of downtown Bangor on a motorcycle when he crashed into a construction scaffolding set up in front of a house. The crash happened at around 1045 Saturday night. Baker, who was not wearing a helmet, was found dead at the scene. Police say Baker was traveling from Harlow Street onto Kanduskeg Avenue when he went across the oncoming lane before leaving the roadway and striking the scaffolding. According to investigators, it was also determined Baker was FaceTiming on his cell phone at the time of the crash. An autopsy will be performed to determine if other factors were involved. Well, the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office is investigating a fatal car crash that occurred in the area of 722 South Chester Road in Chester. First responders arrived on the scene around 10:15 p.m. to find a single vehicle crash involving two female occupants. One occupant was transported to Penobscot Valley Hospital and then was transported by life flight helicopter to Bangor. The other occupant, an 18 year old local student, died in the crash. The sheriff's office says her family and school were immediately notified, but names have not been released to give to the fam give the family time to make arrangements. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. A Greenbush family lost their home to a house fire Sunday morning. Fire crews responded to a residence on East Ridge Road around 1030 AM. According to a Greenbush Fire Department, the fire began in the bathroom before spreading across the front of the house. Crews arrived on scene to find f the front of two rooms fully engulfed. We performed interior operations to get the fire out. 
uh, received mutual aid from Howland Fire Department, Milford Fire Department, and Old Town Ambulance. According to Captain McCrum, there were no injuries. A mother and two children were in the house at the time of the fire. The homeowner says her family was woken up by her seven-year-old son, who helped to make sure everyone got out safely. We woke up this morning to our bathroom being engulfed in flames. Um, the trash can was on fire. It's gone. There's no saving it. We're going to need all kinds of help that we can get. Murray says she attempted to put the flames out with a fire extinguisher, but the fire began to spread too quickly. The fire is being further investigated by the state fire marshal's office. A GoFundMe has been created to assist the family. The link can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. Well, there will be no school today for students in Fairfield. The police department has asked the school department to remain closed today while it investigates a concerning social media post. Officials haven't released details about that post, but say they're making the move out of the, an abundance of caution. The investigation continues as people of Maine continue to heal following last week's deadly mass shooting in Lewiston. We're now learning authorities were alerted last month about veiled threats made by the man accused of killing 18 people and wounding more than a dozen. According to the Associated Press, a statewide awareness alert was sent in mid-September to be on the lookout for Robert Card. That came after the U.S. Army reservist made threats against his base and fellow soldiers. But after stepped up patrols of the base for a couple weeks and a visit to his home turned up no sign of him, they moved on. It's unclear if they were the same threats that resulted in his committal to a mental health facility over the summer after he acted erratically and threatened to shoot up a military base. Mourners came together in Lewiston last night to remember those lost in the shootings last week. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard brings us more from that emotional event. The mourning process has begun for the people of Lewiston and the entire state of Maine as the community came together Sunday night to hold a candlelight vigil. Thank you for coming here tonight and helping us gather to get through the biggest challenge this community has ever known. I want, as we gather, to honor grief and to look towards healing. We will not be defined by the tragedies that have happened here. Fear, anxiety, and trepidation will not di dictate our present or our future. Like all, I extend my deepest sympathies to the families of the victims to those wounded, and to those who witnessed what no one should ever witnessed. I have the deepest gratitude for the law enforcement agents, first responders, and the health responders. Together, we will get through this. Together, we will be stronger. Together, we will remain, as the sign says, hopeful. Outside of the vigil, community members were calling for legislative action to help try and prevent the next mass shooting. Somebody said that a nonce of uh, prevention worth than a pound of uh, cure. So I think this is the time for us to, uh, to take action. Citizens need to speak up and be very loud and very clear. And this is the clear, loud message right here. In Lewiston, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In addition to last night's ceremony, vigils were held across the state this weekend, extending beyond Lewiston. Ga Saturday, Mainers gathered in Lisbon to remember the 18th victims with a candlelight vigil, coming together to grieve and take comfort in one another. We are a community, but we're also a family, and that's why we're here tonight. Right now, the, the focus, the only thing we need to focus on is showing compassion and caring for each other have something you know like this happen it's uh it's taken our security away it's shattered it yeah, really it makes you really stop and think in bangor t um last night another vigil was held at city hall where dozens of mainers joined in moments of silence and prayer when tragic things happen we all seek community and we seek opportunities to come together it's been a hard week for everybody, um, whether you had a personal connection to what happened or not. This could have happened anywhere, and I think that's the thing we all feel. And when it happens to us in Maine, we all feel it, because we all are part of this big family that we call Maine. Well, 
On Friday, authorities revealed the identities of the 18 victims whose lives were tragically taken in Lewiston. And as we learn the names and faces, we'd like to take a moment to tell the stories behind them. Tyler Cruz gives us a closer look. On Friday evening, the Maine Department of Public Safety announcing the names and the faces of the 18 people lost during Wednesday's tragic events, and each of them leaving behind a unique legacy. Here are their stories. Starting with the youngest, Aaron Young, just 14 years old. A freshman at Winthrop High School was at just-in-time recreation for a night at a bowling league with his father, William. The two of them were called the apple of each other's eyes. Robert Violet and Lucille Violet, a married couple in their 70s, were among the victims as well. Robert was an avid bowler. He started a youth bowling league and often took Lucy bowling in a couples league. William Frank Brackett, or Billy Brackett, is being mourned by the deaf community in Maine. Billy was a son, a husband, a father, and a friend to many in the deaf community. He leaves behind his wife, Christina, and their six-month-old daughter. Keith McNair was a Florida resident, 64 years old. He was in Maine visiting a family member named Breslin, recently joking on Facebook about needing an air conditioner in Maine in October. Max Hathaway is a husband and a father of two, soon to be three, as his wife Brenda is expecting later this year. His sister says that Max was a loving person, and it was, quote, really something watching him become a father to his two girls. Stephen Vozella is another member of the deaf community lost on Wednesday evening. There was a cornhole tournament for the community at Schmeggy's Bar. Vozella was an active member of the New England Deaf Cornhole League, and they say he brought excitement and a huge smile to the league, and that is how he will be remembered. Tommy Conrad, 34 years old, was confirmed as one of the victims by his father, Timothy Conrad. He survived by his nine-year-old daughter. Tommy was a new manager at the bowling alley, and he was planning a pumpkin carving night there for his daughter later this month, and died protecting others in the venue. Michael DeSlauriers II was also one of the victims at Just In Time Recreation. His sister Vicki Roy told ABC News her brother, 51 years old, loved golfing and bowling, and bowled in a league once or twice a week. Michael's father told reporters he and a friend made sure their wives and children were safe before charging the shooter at just-in-time recreation. Jason Adam Walker, also 51 years old, was confirmed as one of the victims during Thursday's press conference. He was with Des Lauriers at just-in-time recreation, the friend that charged the shooter and protected the others there. Trisha Asselin was one of the victims from the bowling alley where she loved to frequent. She's remembered as a selfless friend and a kind and caring person. She leaves behind her son, and was actively fundraising for breast cancer. Ron Morin was described as an upbeat, happy guy. His family is seeking privacy at the moment. Morin served as a softball umpire in Maine, and USA Softball Maine posted this message on their Facebook after hearing of the loss. They also tell us that he was a great guy and a pure human being. Peyton Brewer was playing in that cornhole tournament at the Bar and Grill while he lost his life as well. His brother Ralph told reporters that Peyton loved playing cornhole, spending time with his friends, and leaves behind a daughter who recently celebrated her second birthday. Joshua Seal, another member of the deaf community whose life was tragically taken at Schmeggy's Bar and Grill. Seal served as the beloved ASL interpreter for the Maine Public Health's COVID-19 press conferences. Dr. Narav Shah called him the voice and the face of the COVID response for the deaf community in Maine, saying he will forever be missed. Brian McFarlane, another member of the deaf community taken from us on Wednesday night. He was also at the cornhole night at Schmeggy's Bar and Grill. McFarlane was an avid member of the Deaf RC Club, a remote-controlled racing club across the nation. McFarlane's sister says he loved riding motorcycles, outdoor activities, and hanging with his dog, Eminem. Joseph Lawrence was a manager at Schmeggy's Bar and Grill on Wednesday night. His father, Leroy Walker, serves as a city councilor in Auburn and said that Joseph charged at the gunman with a knife to protect others in the bar. Arthur Strout, 42 years old, was also confirmed as one of the victims killed at Schmengi's Bar and Grill. His father had just left before the shooting took place. Strout was a father of five and was playing pool that night with his dad. 
You know, I kept seeing um, after Thursday that Maine is one of those places that it's different than other states in that we are so connected to each other. It's not that Lewiston is our second largest city in Maine. It's that even though we're, I mean, 90 minutes, two hours from yeah. Lewiston here in Bangor, it still feels just like this to us. Something like this happens. Just We're our all neighbors. just one big family here. And right. Maine, you know, whenever something like that happens, but just awful. Absolutely. And it makes a difference too when you can see the faces, you can see the names and hear a little bit about them. It's different than just numbers yeah. out there. So these were real people living their lives, um, just trying to have a nice, nice evening out with their right. friends and families. Right. And, you know. Yeah. Um, it's been really interesting yeah. to see the. Um, you know the response from the community because it's it's so special yeah. and it um if anything over the weekend i was reminded by how much love there is in our community yeah. and i'm very thankful for that yeah i've seen it around here too just yep. people kind of pulling together right helping each other right so. okay um the time now is 6 16 coming up next after on good morning maine a central maine family has found a unique way to honor a teenager who died much too young they're collecting socks for the homeless. Trying to do something nice out of it. But first, another check of your weather forecast. Looks like a messy day today. Chance of rain and snow, kind of an icy mix with highs near 41 degrees. Rain and snow early tonight with lows dropping down to around 28. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and breezy with a high near 42. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. The Old Mill Pub in Skowhegan is an historic restaurant and bar overlooking the Kennebec River. Enjoy the atmosphere while dining on local handcrafted pub fare, as well as main beers and craft cocktails. Also offering bar and catering services for your event or holiday party. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. It's one of the most contentious ballot referendums in Maine history. Should voters say yes to taking over Maine's current investor-owned utilities, or is the plan too risky for Maine people? We sit down with stakeholders on both sides of the issue and get insight from the organization that regulates our current utilities and would oversee a new one, too. That's ahead this week on ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Hi, Eastern Maine. Watch Person, Place, or Thing right here on ABC7, weekdays starting at 10 a.m. Steve knows style. That jacket. When was you in the temptation? And Steve gives into his own temptation. Family Feud. Weekdays at 9 and 9.30 on ABC7. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Rifle hunting kicked off for Maine residents Saturday without restrictions after the manhunt for suspected Lewiston mass shooter Robert Card came to a close. We spoke with hunters in Eddington about their first day of the season. Take a look. My very first deer. Hunters across the state took part in Maine Resident Only Day Saturday. The Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife announced Friday that hunting in Bowdoin, Lewiston, Lisbon, and Monmouth would be prohibited until further notice. However, that suspension was quickly lifted after suspected mass shooter Robert Card's body was discovered Friday night. I think a lot of people feel a lot of relief, one, to kind of not be on guard and I think a lot of people might not have gone out hunting or done a lot of different things now people can kind of get back to back to normal while they would not have been affected by the hunting prohibition those who stopped by the Eddington store in Eddington to weigh and tag their deer say they're glad that everyone can start the season on time I was worried that they were gonna suspend hunting season but uh, when they didn't I was I was ecstatic so I know a lot of people look forward to this every year um, hunting season so uh, it's a way to put meat on the table for us for the winter. Some say deer hunting is an important tradition in Maine. All Mainers who enjoy hunting as a tradition are very grateful that it's open season. Everybody can do what they really enjoy. It brings families together. It's a great tradition, and I hope we can carry it on for generations. For more information about hunting season dates and bag limits, view this story on our website at foxbangor.com. In Eddington, David Ledford. ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. 
Well, an Erskine Academy student who passed away earlier this year is now being remembered by one of his favorite things, socks. Our Callie Warren spoke with his family in the uh, town of China about what they're doing to honor his memory. Remy Pettingill is remembered by those who knew him as kind and caring. The Erskine Academy student passed away in January of 2023 after sustaining injuries in a multi-car accident. Pettingill was an Eagle Scout and a counselor at Pine Tree Camps, but his family says his favorite things were his wild and colorful socks. His community turned this passion into a memorial by gathering socks to donate to a variety of homeless shelters and free clothing closets throughout Maine. He was very vibrant. He uh, brought a lot of love and joy into anybody's life that he met. He had a love of crazy socks and when he passed, we said instead of flowers, we'd like to celebrate his, his favor of socks and helping others. So we said, bring socks. We figured we'd get a couple hundred. Um, we've got over 8,000 pairs donated at his service and in the weeks prior to and beyond. Pettingill's parents teamed up with nonprofit education group Jobs for Maine's graduates to expand collection sites and visibility of the sock drive. This culminated in the group's ongoing Socktober project, where others are encouraged to donate new socks of any size, all in Pettingill's memory. I think it's a fun way to keep his spirit alive. It's a good reminder for people to just be kind. I, I think that's the message. His legacy was kindness. And that is a way that we can help him continue what he already started. In addition to the sock drive, a memorial scholarship in Penningill's name is given to students at Erskine Academy who demonstrate good character and kindness. To find out where to drop off socks or to contribute to Penningill's scholarship fund, visit our website. In China, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. It's a nice thing they're doing there. Yeah, good way to be remembered. Yeah. Okay, the time now is 622. After the break, on the national stage, many Walgreens and CVS pharmacy employees are planning walkouts to protest work conditions today. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Tomorrow morning on Star 97.7, Paul Dupuy has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 97.7 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 97.7. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Come stop by Triple S Tag Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Tomorrow morning on Star 97.7, Paul Dupuy has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 97.7 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 97.7. Some employees from CVS, Walgreens, and other drugstore chains are planning to walk out again as they protest working conditions. Organizers are calling it Farmageddon. <laughs> the walkout is expected to start today and last through Wednesday. Pharmacy staff across the country are promising to call out sick in an attempt to get better working conditions. Their demands include better pay, direct say in scheduling, and guaranteed hours. More than 2,000 people could be participating in the walkout this week. So. I didn't mean to chuckle at Farm again, and I just thought it was. I almost did. Too. Very clever. Uh, yes. Yeah. That, that is good. Yeah, it's a serious situation, though. It is. So. It is serious. <laughs> okay, the time now is 6:25. Farm again, and that was clever. I like that. That was. <laughs> Let's get a full look at your forecast. 
<laughs> Alrighty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orin, no Maine. Active weather is moving through this morning. We'll continue throughout the daytime period, though. There was a winter weather advisory in the northern parts of the state. Last until around 4 to 6 p.m. later this evening, depending on where it's at. You can see some parts up until around 6 p.m. I'll move this map further out towards the west, and some spots will drop at around 4 p.m. Some of these areas right about in here my hands at around 5 to 6 inches cannot be ruled out for the snowfall. While further down to the south, though, there is a small crowd advisory as posted until 11 a.m. as we head towards a Tuesday. Mainly the areas around Bangor can see mainly rainfall, and I'll be about it there. We're calm for now, but the keyword is for now. A lot of the activities off toward the west, tracking off towards the east, where the visibility is reduced. That's all tracking off towards the east across the northern parts of the state, and that will be precipitation on the way. It's starting to fill in now with rain mainly to the south and snow to the north as well. This will continue to fill in as the day progresses on. Not the best travel day, though, but we'll have to be careful with that moving forward. But as you can see, a little bit of a wintry mix could be taking place as well, with some of the rain can mix in with the snow near the Bangor area, maybe even some sleep from time to time as well. We'll zoom things out. A lot of moisture off toward the west right now, too, of rain and snow and a little bit of a wintry mix as well. So we'll be watching for this developing as the day progresses on. Last until later this evening at around 5 p.m. or so before things slowly start to taper off as this area low pressure located right about in here continues to track from the west and goes off toward the east. So there's a lot going on here before we're all finished up. Future gas moving forward. Watch that line right there. Kind of staying put around the Bangor area. Rain, snow, make sure not out of the question. Maybe some sleet as well by around 5 o'clock later on tonight. A lot of this starts to back off. And then as we get towards early Tuesday morning, ah, a lot easier, right? A lot of this gets out of here with a lot of sunshine that will greet us as we get towards the Tuesday. And things are many rather quiet even in your Wednesday as well. As for the snowfall, though, here we go. Roughly around 5 to 6 inches for some spots further off towards the north before we're all finished up. Bangor, you're going to be close. You might see a little bit of snow, but most people stay to the north, though. I think most of the spots along and south of Bangor will mainly stay as rain. You have to go further off towards the north for any kind of snowfall that will be expected at around 3 to 5 inches overall, but some spots up to 6 inches, especially where my hand is at, at cannot be ruled out overall. But as we do move forward for today, though, 41 degrees, rain and snow expected though it will be breezy northeast wing getting up to around 15 miles per hour later on side 28 degrees rain and snow early and then decreasing clouds and that west wind getting up to about five miles per hour as for tomorrow lower 40s mostly sunny and breezy out there northwest wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour scott's recreation extended forecast halloween is tomorrow a lot better with a lot of sunshine temperatures in the lower 40s lower 40s again on wednesday with a party cloudy sky lots of sunshine thursday highs in the mid 40s and lower 50s friday with the party cloudy sky. Miracle Ear made it easy. I just booked an appointment and a certified hearing care professional evaluated my hearing loss and helped me find the right device calibrated to my unique hearing needs. Call now and book your free hearing evaluation. When outdoors, some people like it hot and some people like it cold. However, when indoors, most people like it comfortably warm. Choose a Baderas boiler from McCusick Petroleum Company to provide you with comfortable and efficient heat. They also offer sales and service on many brands of furnaces, boilers, and water heaters. McCusick Petroleum Company delivers oil and LP gas to homes and businesses throughout the Penquist region. If you'd like more information on pricing or service, call or stop by our office in Dover Foxcroft. GMA this week. Wake up with Jennifer Garner cooking things up. The best deals and steals on Oprah's favorite things. New Kids on the Block, Cheryl Crow, and some mad, scary fun Halloween surprises. Halloween morning on GMA. Hi, I'm Angelina Mucci. And I'm Andy Mucci of Family Fun Ball and Senna. When we want to know the weather, we go to foxbangor.com. Celebrating our 50th anniversary year, Family Fun Bowling Center has 20 lanes of 10-pin bowling at its best. There's a reason why Maine State's slogan is the way life should be. It's because our beautiful state is full of humble people, workers, business owners, and neighbors making a difference in their community. I'm always looking for positive and encouraging news stories about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. How fortunate am I that I get to share these special stories? Watch the good news weekdays on ABC7 News at 6. Miracle Ear made it easy. I just booked an appointment and a certified hearing care professional evaluated my hearing loss and helped me find the right device calibrated to my unique hearing needs. Call now and book your free hearing evaluation. 
There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Gunfire erupted over the weekend, spoiling Halloween celebrations in a number of cities. Things turned deadly in Tampa, and more than a dozen people were shot at a party in Chicago. Here's ABC's Rihanna Nally. This morning, Halloween celebrations are getting off to a violent start in communities across the country. Shots rang out in Tampa, Florida on Saturday. At least two people killed and more than a dozen wounded during the shooting. In this fight between two groups, we had hundreds of innocent people involved. Marissa Riker's 20-year-old sister was visiting from Missouri, suffering a gunshot wound to the leg and requiring emergency surgery. I've always been like my sister's keeper. That's how a big sister's supposed to be, and I can't be that right now for her. In Indianapolis, 10 people shot and one woman killed at a Halloween party. Unfortunately, somebody took it upon themselves to inflict injury and pain on members of our community, and it's not acceptable. Meanwhile, at least 15 shot at a Halloween party in Chicago, two critically injured. Between Friday and Sunday, at least 11 people were killed and 76 others injured in 12 mass shootings across the country. Most of the shootings taking place in the early morning hours as large Halloween celebrations were wrapping up. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Now turning overseas to Israel's war against Hamas militants. Israel says its offensive has entered a second stage as it expands its air and ground attacks. Hamas also intensifying its airstrikes as the death toll rises. The Gaza Health Ministry reporting more than 8,000 Palestinian civilians are dead. Israeli officials say more than 1,400 killed as tensions flare in the region and beyond. ABC's Justin Finch is following the latest. This morning, an apparent sign of present Middle East tensions reverberating thousands of miles away. New videos circulating online showing chaos at this airport in the predominantly Muslim Russian Republic of Dagestan. Russian media reporting a mob of hundreds rushing that airport, chanting anti-Semitic slogans, some making their way onto the tarmac, targeting passengers from a flight from Tel Aviv. Health officials say more than 20 were injured. Israel condemning the incident, pressing Russia to protect the safety of all Israeli citizens and Jews and act resolutely against the rioters. At the Israel-Gaza border, airstrikes escalating. The Israeli Defense Forces bolstering its Gaza ground offensive against Hamas militants, dispatching armored tanks into the Palestinian territory. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying Israel is now in an expanded second phase of war. The Israeli PM and President Biden speaking via phone, with Biden saying Israel needs to defend itself in a manner consistent with international humanitarian law. Across Gaza, death and destruction, food and water running low. The United Nations warning of a worsening humanitarian crisis. The agency says thousands of Gazans broke into their warehouses, taking basic survival items, calling it a worrying sign civil order has started to break down. Israel says today it plans to increase the amount of aid going into Gaza, but didn't say by how much. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. You know, one more thing, unrelated thing that broke over the weekend. Matthew Perry died over the weekend. Yeah. Um, an actor for Friends. He played Chandler Bing. Um, just making news around the country now. It's, uh, kind of a sad thing. I know. Yeah. yeah, way too young. They found him in a hot tub at his home out in L.A., and we still don't know what happened. But just shocking for people around my age, especially who watched a lot of Friends when it was on. So, right. yeah, just right. terrible. I know. Too much I, bad news going on right now. I know. I was yeah. just going to say that did you hear about the former Penguins player who yeah. died in a freak accident on the ice? No. His no. neck was cut by an ice oh, skate. Lord. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's going on in the world right now, and I, I think I don't blame people for taking a step back. Be kind to everybody because yeah. everybody's probably feeling the same way we are right we now. We are Just sponges. Kind of too much. Yeah, yeah, we are sponges, and yeah. we do meet a bandwidth, so yeah. it's important to, you know, go, go for a walk in the woods. Yeah, and, good and, idea. And unplug. Yeah. 
Okay, coming up here on the second half of the newscast, farm animals, candy, and Halloween fun brought the community together to enjoy the spirit of spooky season over the weekend. There you go. See, there I needed go. that. Right. Plus, right. some of it comes at a higher cost. We didn't need that <laughs> since we're seeing Halloween candy prices are up 13% this month. Those stories and more as Good Morning Maine continues. When Dover Audiology wants to know the local forecast, they log on to FoxBangor.com. Come to Dover Audiology and find out where people from Kittery to Eastport go to get their hearing aids. Knowledgeable, friendly, and reasonable, Dover Audiology is your best place for hearing solutions. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reaction, and analysis of your favorite teams. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 29 locations owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, with 1A Holdings, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. Who likes to drink good coffee? At Carabasa Coffee Company, we roast premium quality coffee beans from all over the world. Roasted to perfection in small batches, our coffee is always fresh. We offer large selection, including our specialty blends, organic, single origins, decaf, and flavor. Whether you like light, medium, or dark roast, we have coffee to suit every taste. We offer flat rate shipping for online orders, and we ship fast. Carabasa Coffee Company. Drink good coffee. It's you. I bet that home runs, huh? Hey, pass me the keys, Rob. I haven't had anything to drink. Good idea. We've learned to speak up to prevent drinking and driving. So why don't we speak up to prevent texting and driving? The results can be the same. Speak up. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intoxicated. A sobering message from AAA. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, October 30th, 2023. And I know you're going to like this one. It's also National Checklist Day. I have three on mine so far. She's always making a list. I know. If I don't so. write things down, I will go crazy yeah. and drive myself insane and I'll forget things. It's a good way to get things done. I will miss a bill, yeah. my car payment, I'll, yeah. it's gone. See, I forget yeah. things all the time. I need to do a checklist myself. You, that would be good. Yeah. That would be good. Ain't you, could, you, could, you can always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Few things feel better than checking things off in a checklist. So if you've got too many things to do that you've been putting off, why not try writing them down on a list? You'd be surprised how much easier it is to get your tasks done when you check them off one by one. And I find so much irony in the fact that you wrote that. I know. <laughs> you know, when I, was, when I was news director, I had to write checklists all the right. time. And, and it's right. It feels so good once you get that list down. There's barely anything less. So I just I believe in checklists. I have to, yeah. otherwise I can't sleep. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I'm just thinking of all the things. And unfortunately, though, I'm a checklist person, but I know there's always still only 50% of the actual things that are going on in my head that right. I could have on. Yeah. I know there's other things that I'm going to forget about, and it drives me insane. Yeah. So. It makes you more efficient, though. It does. You know, it's kind of you make a plan, carry it out. And, I go through journals yeah. and little notebooks like crazy. Yeah. It's yep. a good thing. Yep. All right, moving on. There's another thing in here I think you're going to like, too. Okay. Okay. On this day in history, in eight, this isn't it. In 1894, <laughs> okay. although you might like this, okay. inventor Daniel Cooper patented the first time clock in the U.S. As in just a normal clock? I guess so. We weren't. What were, all were we using sundials? Before I think that? so. I think it was all what? sundials. No, they had clocks, but he was the first one in the U.S. to patent something. I'll have to look into that more. So I know the yeah. whole patented thing makes me not understand the, it. The key words there: the first in the U.S. Okay. So, okay. Anyway. okay. Moving on. This is kind of neat. I was just <laughs> talking to my dad about this the other day. Yeah. In 1938, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds was broadcast over the radio. Many people panicked and believed it was an actual newscast about a Martian invasion. 
region. I believe my grandmother was one of those, Danny yeah. Castine, and she thought, what is going on? Right. And they thought a real an alien invasion was happening. I know. We so. um, In grade school, you'd learn about that, but I need yeah. to go back and learn. Was it just the fact that they didn't give updates after every ad break or whatever? And maybe they yeah, didn't have ad know. breaks of, this is a story. We're talking about a yeah. story here. It but. was so realistic. And, and right. you know, all the, we didn't have TV shows back then. It was all on the radio. So it was just right. so realistic. People thought it was a newscast. Yeah. So hmm. anyway, this is the part you like. And in 1974, the horror film Texas Chainsaw Massacre premiered in cinemas. That's one of my favorites. I know you like um, that one. It's one of my favorites and it's kind of, I watched a documentary on how it was made and it's kind of crazy. It was very low budget yeah. and the actors were not compensated fairly for how famous <laughs> it's become, which which is heartbreaking to me, but it's also just, it's crazy how they were able to do something like that because yeah. people who have seen it, you obviously know it's disgusting. Yeah, it turned so, into a classic though for people that like it, that oh, kind yeah. of thing. I know. So. It's weird that that's, it's, I'm a weird person for that being one of yeah. my favorite movies. Oh, no, you are. A yeah. lot of people like that. Yeah. And in 1974, Bob Boxer Muhammad Ali knocked out George Foreman to regain his heavyweight title. It was a 15-round bout known as the Rumble in the Jungle. That's where that comes, That's from. Where that comes from. Duh. Okay. In 2012, Superstorm Hurricane Sandy devastated the East Coast, creating a major disaster area in heavily populated areas like New York City. Today's birthdays include actor and director Henry Winkler, who may be known best for his role as the Fonz in Happy Days. You guys that grew up in this area missed out on a great show. <laughs> Happy Days was awesome. Oh, and okay. the Fonz was like the coolest of the cool. Right. And you know, he was yeah. like, hey, that's what he did. That <laughs> okay. was his whole thing. Okay. You know, it's the Fonz. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I can't believe well, he's 78 today. Bring him back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's 78. Um, broadcast journalist Andrea Mitchell is 77. And actor Kevin Pollack is 65. He's one of those guys you don't know his name, but right. he's in everything. I know. And you recognize him. Well, but. I also can't like name something he's in, but I know him. Yeah, I know he's him. been in a million he's things. He's surly. So. He's one of those surly guys. Yeah. He plays surly characters, and I love it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I also love this background. It's tomorrow's Halloween. I Aren't don't know you if chip more chipper now after that midpoint there? Yeah. About those no, we needed things, something. So. Yeah, yeah, as much as a Monday can be. Yeah. Okay. As far as the weather's concerned. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I need my snow tires on already. I know, it's about that time. Call your mechanic That's today. That's what this, this weather's kind of like. You start getting that icy mix, it's kind of a reminder. Yeah. Okay, got to get the car in the shop and yep. get it ready. So. I got to buy tires. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Here's Devin with today's weather forecast. Yep. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. As we get into things this morning, active weather taking place with a winter weather advisory posted along the north here for the counties highlighted here in purple. Until around 4 p.m., some accumulating snow taking place there. Some spots could possibly see up to around 5 to 6 inches, according to where my hand is at right now. Further down to the south, mainly rainfall expected and a small crowd advisory posted until 11 a.m. Tuesday along the coast because of some winds that will be expected. On top of that, though, the visibility levels aren't bad just yet, but the key word there is yet. Look what's off toward the north and west, though. That reduced visibility there, courtesy of the snowfall that are seeing further off towards the north. And that will be heading towards the northern parts of the state coming up soon. Bangor, mainly to the south, should mainly stay as rain. You might see a little bit of snow mixing in from time to time as well. I'm not too worried about accumulation for you. A lot of it will be further off towards the north where the accumulating snow will be possible in a few spots. And it's all starting to fill in with a lot of moisture that will be moving through with rain and snow that will be on the way today. Maybe some sleep mixing in from time to time as well. So I had to keep an eye on that as it does develop over time. Future cast for today will catch a little bit of a break by around 5 o'clock later this afternoon in the evening time frame. And look at this. By around Tuesday morning, a lot of this really starts to get out of here. As for your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, rain and snow on the way. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Your full five day forecast is Coming up, Craig and Emma. All right, thank you, Devin. Look at your face. It was 75 <laughs> degrees on Saturday. Wasn't it nice? I was uncomfortable by it yeah. though too. It's it was like so hot. Yeah. And Icky, yeah, you know. it was kind of too much, yeah. but I guess I'm just one of those Mainers now who's like not happy with anything. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I loved Saturday. It was great. Yeah, it was good. All right, moving on. Kids and adults alike trotted up to a Halloween celebration in Orono on Saturday. Witter Farms annual trick or trot event brought together animals, candy, face painting, and more to highlight the spooky season. At the University of Maine, kids got an up-close look at a variety of farm animals and a jump start on the holiday. Some say events like these help to develop a sense of community. 
It's a really good sense of community and it brings everyone together, which is awesome. And bonding over animals and fun games and candy. We got a lot of um, families um, and a lot of little kids in their costumes and a lot of students too. To learn more about the Maine Animal Club, which hosts the event, you can visit our website at foxbangor.com. I think that's what a lot of people needed on Saturday. Yeah. I'm glad to see it. Hang out with some critters. Yeah. yeah. Yep, spend time with the community. Yeah. Okay, still to come here this morning, Ryan Sudol will have our sports updates. Don't go away. Making contributions to a 529, no matter how big or how small, keeps the conversation going for a family. Some sort of training beyond high school is needed. Having some money put away, that's kind of our goal. And it helps your child think about what they want to do with their future and know that they have some financial support, but also your support as a parent to pursue their dreams. To learn more about NextGen 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the program description at nextgenforme.com. Check if your home state has a 529 plan that offers tax or other benefits. I was there when the procedure was done. I was standing right there, so. A dog grooming business gets blasted. What I'm seeing is somebody who's a moron giving a dog a bath. You have to clean the underneath of the ear, but the... Not with a hose! But this owner stands by her employee. Why isn't she here? Maybe she didn't want to speak to the pictures of what she did. My dog. That's a problem for you. Next Judge Judy. Monday at 5, only on ABC7. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, contact the law offices of Joe Bornstein to learn about your legal rights. Maine has the highest rate of mesothelioma fatalities in the U.S. You may be eligible to receive compensation if you were exposed to asbestos products while working in a shipyard, mill, factory, or construction site. For a free case evaluation, dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudol here. Thank you so much for joining us. On Saturday, Maine football returned to the field playing Albany at home. The Black Bears fell to the Great Danes, but this was bigger than just a game with the events of the past few days still fresh. In lieu of everything going on, we wanted to make sure that we played for the state of Maine. After an emotional week all over Maine in wake of Wednesday's mass shooting in Lewiston, Black Bear football took the field against Albany Saturday with heavy hearts. There's stuff bigger than football, um, and that shows it. So, you know, I just really hope that community in Maine, um, you know, can, can just get better from it. Since Thursday, the team practiced for the game as normally as they could, while also ensuring that their fellow Black Bears, especially Mainers, we're not alone. We took time to actually, you know, be together, not even, not even just like as a team, but as a athletic community, main athletic, um, you know, just coming together and just, um, you know, supporting everybody and, you know, just praying every day. Maine started out the game with a bang, scoring a first drive touchdown, but Albany's big play offense was dominant the rest of the way as Maine fell 37-21. Um, I'm not going to sit there and say, like, they were doing this outrageous stuff. Um, they played who they were. They played, played the plays that they play. Um, we just have to do a better job of executing our plays. Part of the lack of scoring was quarterback Derek Robertson's three costly turnovers, including a 68-yard scoop and score. I mean, that's the difference. Um, that's 100% on me. Um, can't turn the ball over. It puts the whole team in, in an awful spot. It's that simple. I just can't do that. I have to be a lot better. With the loss, the Black Bears are now 2-7 and seven on the year. But if there's one thing head coach Jordan Stevens is constantly impressed by, it's the team's ability to keep on coming to work. Really proud of the players for continuing to show up ready at work because the guys love football. The ability that they have shown to just respond and come back Monday like with a new attitude and new commitment to the week has been impressive. Just as important, the team's commitment Saturday to play for all those affected by the events in Lewiston. From the patches on their helmets to the reading of the 18 victims' names, the biggest takeaway here is that the Black Bears are Lewiston strong. Um, I gave my full 110% effort today for Lewiston. I, I definitely went out there with a heavy heart today, but I just wanted to put on for uh, Maine and Lewiston. To be able to, you know, put the block Maine across your chest, uh, especially in a time like this, uh, it obviously means a lot. We're just praying for them and hope this day can, can recover as quickly as possible.
It's just fantastic stuff there from all involved. And Coach Stevens also telling us at the press conference that the team will be announcing efforts to raise money for those affected by the Lewiston shooting in the coming days. Okay, let's stay with football here. Let's move over to Husson. Big game for the 5-2 and two Eagles Saturday, welcoming the number 19 team in the nation, Endicott, on Senior Day. Early second half, Endicott up 6 nothing. Goals Anthony Caginelli takes the handoff, cuts it up, and he is in for the score. They lead 13 to nothing. A few minutes later, Husson threatening. Nick Visser is going to toss this one into the end zone. And watch this catch from Marcus Sessoms, reeling it in with one hand. He gets six, and they cut it to one score. To the fourth, two minutes to go. Goals up 16-7, and Clayton Marenghi, a great ball fake, calls his own number, 20 yards to the house for the touchdown. That seems to seal the game, but... Husson ain't going away. They drive right down the field. And Visser connects with Cullen Casey on this dime for the touchdown. Nice way to end the day for the Eagles. They fall, though, 23-13. And now to some other scores from the area. Husson soccer in the NAC men's soccer semifinals wins over Thomas College 4-3. And uh, Maine Maritime defeats Husson women's soccer in the NAC women's soccer quarterfinals. In the NAC field hockey quarterfinals, Husson wins 11 to nothing over UMaine Farmington. And finally, in Division I women's hockey, Maine falls to Boston University 4 to 3. Okay, now let's go to the Boston Celtics. Seas had their home opener Friday night against the Miami Heat and once again showed all the promise you can show this early in the season. They won 119-111 to to go to 2-0 with the starting five scoring all but eight of their points. Point guard Derek White was the high scorer with 28. 14 in the fourth quarter. A guy who sometimes didn't even play in the fourth quarter last year, head coach Joe Mazzula says his competitiveness has boosted confidence in him. For White, it's the push he has received from his teammates and head coach. He's a competitor, he's consistent, and uh, he wants to win. And I mean, like the plays he made tonight like, were sick. Like, they were just sick plays. It's the only word you can describe it. I mean, hearing it from some of the top guys in the league that they want me to be aggressive, uh, it obviously gives you more confidence. And Joe has given me confidence since the moment he stepped into the head coaching position. So um, all those combined, and I just got to go out there and be aggressive. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Ryan Sudall. We'll be back right after the break. This Veterans Day, join Fox ABC Maine as we salute and honor our veterans. Are you an active, inactive, or retired member of the armed services? Do you know someone who is? Then upload your photos on foxbangor.com slash Heroes. We will randomly select multiple veterans to win a gift voucher from Chick-fil-A. Locally sponsored by First National Bank, Healing Hands Massage, Silver Fox Automotive, and Triple S Tax Shop. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. The Old Mill Pub in Skowhegan is an historic restaurant and bar overlooking the Kennebec River. Enjoy the atmosphere while dining on local handcrafted pub fare, as well as main beers and craft cocktails. Also offering bar and catering services for your event or holiday party. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. It's country music's biggest night, the CMA Awards, live. We just getting started, let's go! With performances by Luke Bryan, Lainey Wilson, Carly Pierce with Chris Stapleton, Old Dominion with Megan Maroney, Tanya Tucker with Little Big Town, Jelly Roll and Kay Michelle, and more. Hosted by Luke Bryan and Peyton Manning. The dynamic duo is back. We must be doing something right. The CMA Awards live Wednesday, November 8th on ABC and stream next day on Hulu. Those Halloween treats are playing mean tricks again this year on your budgets. Retail price tracker Date Assembly says consumers who dole out those special Halloween treats in the neighborhood are paying double-digit inflation prices for the second year in a row. Candy and gum prices on average are up 13% this month compared to the same time last year. And that's adding to the 14% increase on those treats last October. Market research firm Numerator says some customers are planning on turning to value or store made brands for candy. <laughs> Weather is to blame <laughs> for the price hikes. Uh, for chocolate, cocoa prices are at 44 year highs because of heavy rain in West Africa, which has affected production. Also, global sugar prices are at 12-year highs. Well, 
it's not a good situation at all. No. Yeah. No. I noticed that. I went to one of the stores the other day. It was like 19 bucks for a little bag of candy or something I, like that. No. So, I yeah. saw Martin's and Ellsworth has, they were advertising they have name brand candy. So hopefully maybe they go. still have some, maybe in the Bangor one or your yeah. local Martin's. Head to Martin's. I guess so. Yeah, I don't know where else. So. Because I like, you know, I like the good stuff. I want like Milky Ways and yeah. Kit Kats yeah. and Skittles and I don't want. <laughs> you know. I want it all now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, what Somebody left candy on my desk, though. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they left they left a note with "You can do this" with whatever mm -hmm. story I wrote, and then thank you, thank you, yeah. little newsroom angel. Our desks are right next to each other, and somebody yeah. put all this candy right in the middle, right between us. I've already had some today. I, I didn't touch one of them yeah. on Friday when Except you. Except some of it was candy corn, so yeah. also maybe somebody's trying to poison us. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go to break right now. So what we're doing? Okay. Keenan says, go to break. <laughs> okay. We're talking too much. Oh, we're talking again. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wing salads and sides to our specialty wood fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. People ask me all the time, are those commercials really true? Does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. We really have gotten millions of dollars for Mainers hurt by commercial vehicles. And the insurance companies know when you call the twos, we're going to fight for you. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. COVID-19 is still a major health concern. It hasn't gone away and new cases are on the rise. Everyone aged six months and older should be vaccinated against COVID. People with high blood pressure, asthma, heart disease, and diabetes who are overweight and who are older are at a higher risk of getting very sick from COVID. Get vaccinated, don't risk your health. Visit hometownhealthcenter.org for more information. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reaction, and analysis of your favorite team. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 29 locations owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, with 1A Holdings, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. Monster Night is upon us. It's Halloween on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> These ghouls know how to party. Monster Night on Dancing with the Stars, live Tuesday on ABC and Disney+. Plus. Hey, let's leave them with some nice video. We're about out of time. Yeah. But we'll go ahead and roll that last video as we say goodbye. This is some, some shots from a... A um, pet Halloween costume contest. Yeah. Down in Ecuador. Are yeah. they going to roll the tape? I guess they're not going to roll it. No, they they're don't. not going to roll it. Why did I say anything? I'm 